here we are back with the second episode of the day. So yeah, let's just do this shit and get this episode done. So we're gonna, I think we're gonna play week 10 get after week 10. We, we have a bye week, then we have week 10. I think after that we're gonna send the playoffs and that'll be the final playoffs run for this team. But I still haven't totally decided. I might play until like week 13, week 14, but... I haven't totally decided this yet. Oh, I'll, I'll know at some point. But either way, let me know in the comments what team you would like to see. Because I think we're just going to week 10, assuming the playoffs we for 10 and 0, and we're probably going to be like a number one seed no matter what. So yeah. So many things can happen that can go wrong when you throw it downfield like that. He got away with it there and in a big way. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. Steps away. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Defensively, here you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20, because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points score gives yourself a, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. I think so because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take... And Denver getting set to take the field. Not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. They'll look to throw. Swings it out to the flat for Freeman. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It's a loss of five there. Bringing up second. But they face a second and long to start things out. They're going to look to throw. Forced out to his left. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. Got his man. It's Thomas. Touchdown, Denver. Demarius Thomas. He'll look to throw. Flush to his right. He finds an opening past the 40. 23 yards on the tuck and run. On that play, as you saw the route start to develop downfield, I got the sense that maybe the run would set up for him. And he took full advantage of it and got a big gain on a busted play. They'll set up a throw, being chased out left. Room to run inside the 40. And finally brought down at the 31-yard line. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. Tackle there by Clay Matthews. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Lambeau following these words. Coming up at halftime, we remind you once again that we're going to check in with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL as we reach now, hard to believe, the halfway point of the season. And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Cortland Sutton, his 17th touchdown now on the season. And the Broncos will extend their lead. Brandon, my man, just one sentence for that one. Clinic. 
And that's what they've done. They lead the league in points per game this season, but it's been quick strike ability as we saw on that drive. I think they're actually intimidating defenses because they're back on their heels right away, wondering where... The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And they have to be pleased with the way that they've moved the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Looked to me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up, running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield, and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly. And that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Now, that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there, and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. Steps away to his left. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. Well, there was pressure all around him, so the only play was to try and get out of there. I think it was an excellent effort by him just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. He's going to sling this deep down feet. And this is taken in at the five. And all the way home for a Bronco score. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He sets to fire deep. It's caught inside the 25. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Cortland Sutton, 75 yards. And the Broncos will add on to their... Denver touchdown. Cut. Back to throw now in his own end zone. He's going to wind up and air it out. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And all the way down to the 42. A huge play there for Denver. 56 yards. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. And nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times, tried to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Going up top. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. In for the score. And the Bronco. Yeah, 
They'll come out throwing here on first down. Here we go. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Going for the deep ball. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. Charles, you said earlier this defense is probably going to need to hold these guys right around 20 or under that if they were going to have a chance. It was evident pretty early on that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, they left 20 behind a long time ago in this game, didn't they? It looks like they're headed towards a big, big number. But 20 was the threshold because that kept them in the ball game and kept the pressure off of their own offense. And incomplete here. So a little razzle-dazzle on that one. But they couldn't hook up, and it's third down. They'll set up to throw. Looking deep downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And Denver getting set to take the field. They come into enemy territory, and I don't care what the matchup is in the National Football League. You're up like this late in the game on the road. This feels pretty good. Oh, it feels fantastic. Anytime you get a road victory in the NFL, that's a big-time accomplishment. And to do it this convincingly, that just tears up the script that every home team has, which is nobody comes into our house and pushes us around. They took care of business today. Yeah, they pushed around, and now the final stages of this one. Back to throw now on first down. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Nick Perry in there to get him, and that's sack number six for him on the year. Brandon, that's just football 101. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. Defense still with three timeouts. We'll see if they want to use him here as the kneel down.